Tactical Tuesday. It has been a while since we actually completed one of these things. Technical issues and all, but we start the day off with some questions from the crowd. Craig brings lots of good questions. Critical hit. How to determine what it's, when you get a critical hit, what modifiers, how do you look at the modifiers, how do you apply the modifiers. We go into a good, good discussion on critical hit. Then we involve ourselves with Sync's Encouragement. I, I think the scenario is S41, maybe? Anyway, Sync's Encouragement. It is an odd scenario, a very odd scenario, and you'll find out at the end. We discuss not necessarily the player's actions, the player's plans per se, but we're looking overall as how the Americans progress based upon how some of the scenario special rules um, occur. Essentially, the Americans get a pregame bombardment, as I think you've seen in some of the other scenarios. I think there's a uh, sort of like OBA that's bastardized for our starter kit. So that occurs at the beginning of the game, very controlled by the Americans. Essentially, he gets to pick and choose where he wants to blow stuff up. So the Germans have to dis dis disperse, and you'll see that in almost all the setups. Saying, hey, Stu, why, the, why, why don't the Germans clump up in the middle? Because they're going to get blasted by the scenario special rules. So uh, we go into discussion on 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 the on the scenario based upon how effective that is and how whether or not the Americans actually win the scenario based upon the effectiveness of that single attack early in the game. So it can make a huge distinction. We get in a great discussion. It appears that there is technically three versions of the scenario. Uh, the one that you see in the setup file is the first iteration of the scenario so don't go by the scenario special rules in in the setup file read your scenario card again this is another example of when you need to analyze the card versus something someone's given you i'm not saying that ignore all the work it's a lot of hard work with that it's just outdated so as things develop as things evolve as you know vassal changes things become outdated and so therefore it's very difficult to keep those files up to date, very difficult. Anyway, get into three versions of that. Roar has the scenario 26 German, seven American. I don't think that is a complete balance factor based upon the scenario itself. Again, this is another scenario where because it's been out for a long time, you've got three versions. Version one may have really favored the Germans. Version two, probably still a little favor and version three could very well favor the americans and so therefore the raw record's kind of sketchy on a scenario such as this so don't always go abide by the raw record of what it is being able to analyze a scenario seeing what it gives you seeing what it doesn't give you can be a huge part of your success in that game again we analyzed last time seven german squads seven american squads if we go one for one and we have a half squad left over, we can win the game. Those are things you need to think about. No, not the war record, not the setup. Scenario card. This is not the scenario card, but scenario card. Read all that you can on that and make any notes that you need to make and imply and put those in your game. We talked about that before. The Germans have a smoke exponent of three for their four, six, sevens. That doesn't occur in any other scenario that I know of, you know, Star Kit or ASL. And there's a lot of scenarios that usually doesn't happen. That's usually applied to like assault engineers or something like that. So if you forget that, you could lose as the Germans. If you don't use smoke as the Americans, you could lose as the Americans simply by those two simple little things. Again, your success as an ASK or ASL player is solely based upon your utilization of the rules and what you know and how to apply them. That's why we're here. Enjoy the discussion. We'll see you at the end. I, I am on the road, but it's a, I think I came up with like a 10 minute discussion items on critical hit that I think I can do on the road. Okay. If, uh, if Stu, if you could put on your board there, a Russian 37 millimeter AT gun. Okay. And uh, and then just pull up, um, you know, a weak German Panzer. 
a small one, something sm something that uh, gets minus one small. Oh, a small vehicle. Gotcha. Panzer one. How's that? I don't know what it is. It's so, a Panzer one. Panzer one, sure. Okay. So, uh, put the AT gun in a in a building, and uh, and have its covered arc, um, not where the uh, not facing the uh, tank. Gotcha. So, let's uh, let's consider the tank is moving and it just comes in the line. Well, actually, let's just look at what you've got on there right now. All right. So, the basic the basic question I have for everybody Excuse me. is. Um, if the AT gun fires at that German tank and rolls snake eyes, is it a critical hit? For SK? For SK? For SK? Oh, you're, you're talking about does it even hit? Oh, I know where you're going with this one. Uh, yeah. No, Stu, you can't jump in on this. This is for this is for. Oh the, uh... shit! <laughs> <laughs> I'm, not, <laughs> I'm not testing you, Stu. Oh, oh yeah. No. All right, I thought you were okay. All right, all right. I don't know the answer. It. So how about that? I mean, you are testing me because I don't know the answer from SK's perspective. Yeah. Well, uh, well okay. and, and, I, and actually, I should sort of I should exclude Mark too because he knows the rules better than me. But <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right. I'll be silent. So, it, anybody else there in, in the room? Anybody know? You roll snake eyes on there. Is it a critical hit? Yes or no? Anybody got an answer? I'll jump in. Yes. In this case, yes, it is. it's a critical hit. Okay. So let's do the math on this. Um, for it to hit, you got to change the covered arc, right? Okay. So that's plus uh, what uh, six? Right. It'll be uh, a plus three, but it's in a building, so it's doubled. That's plus six. And the vehicle is moving. We're going to say now that, because really, the, the, the question can't be answered with the little bit of information I gave you. So it, it might be, and it might not be, right? So if that vehicle is moving, and it just came in the covered arc, what's the modifier? Or I should say just came in a line of sight. So you've only seen it for one movement. Point. Oh, wow. Oh, crap. Yeah, plus four. Another plus four on top of that. Okay. And it's a small target. So plus one. So your total modifiers are what? Uh, plus 11. Plus 11. So even if it weren't small, and even if it had been in line of sight for a little while, what do you need to hit? I, I'm not sure where Stu put it, but it's probably going to be... a. Uh, a 10 or a 9 to hit, right? Uh, correct. It'd yeah. be a moving target yeah. where you don't get any other modifiers. So base, so uh, vehicle target type at 0 to 6 hexes is a base to hit of 10. Base 10. So yeah. with all those modifiers, you, you got anything more than plus 8 on your modifiers. Even if you roll snake eyes, it's a miss. So even if you roll snake eyes, you must obtain a hit for it to be a critical hit. That's one of the first things it says is if you attain a hit or uh, rolling a two that attains a hit. So snake eyes alone or area target type for that matter doesn't necessarily guarantee a critical hit. You got to have the hit first. But it does give you a what? And what's the big plus with that? You rolled snake eyes. Well, it certainly gives you another shot. It yeah, gives you another shot, fire. and now you don't have that. And now you don't have that plus six for changing the covered arc, right? right? And and oh, by the way, you got an acquisition, so Correct. you didn't get the hit, but you get a second chance. Correct. So, and uh, one other your point is the tank then must must expend another MP for you to fire again. Yes, which okay. you know, depending on the scenario or the uh, what's happening there, is probably got to expend at least another movement point to stop if he's got more there or, you know, yeah. and somewhere in that movement phase with movement points remaining, yeah. um, he's, uh, he's still got something going. Yeah. All right. When, uh, when he can activate the teleport device that he's got on board. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> All right. Uh, let's see. So 
Hold on a second. I've got some notes here, but it's hard. I'm going to pull over for just a second. <laughs> so, I don't want to stop traffic on the highway so I can do Tactical Tuesday. All right, let's see. So, um, oh, the next question is, is pretty easy. How is the attack resolved? Let's say you, you attain the hit. So for what, maybe it was in the covered arc and you rolled snake eyes and you got that hit. How is that attack resolved? This is a pretty easy one. On the, the two kill. Double the two kill number and then subtract the armor value. Right. So the 37 millimeter two kill. Anybody know what can see what it is on the chart? Looks like at two hex range and maybe. Yeah, it's either 11. It's probably like an 11, I think, on the, is that right, on the Russian 37 millimeter? Uh, no, 37 uh, at two X's is a 10. 10, okay. So 20 in the armor, so basically you got to kill. And it, as a reminder, uh, unlike ASL, if you roll boxcars on the two kill, it's not a dud. It's the only thing that's a dud in uh, SK is uh, rolling boxcars for Panzerfaust. So, um, ASL is a little bit different in that. Okay, so now let's uh, let's say we've got uh, uh, Stu pull up a, a German squad. Okay. Excuse me, I, I, a question here. You're saying that it is a hit with two, or not a hit? Well, if if because... rather than having all those modifiers that we talked about, may, maybe your second shot, where you rolled a two and all you had was a, you know, you had a minus one. For it being small, plus one for the, uh, or sorry, plus yeah, whatever. No, I, and I, I and you're doing that hit with the two. If you roll snake eyes and a an original, or snake eyes, then it is a critical hit. So, but as it, opposed it, to final die roll, that's on the area target type, and vehicle target type. Yeah, no, no, but I'm I'm just saying here that, I I, I want to make sure that I understand what you're saying. You're sure. saying that, that uh, in the case where we've moved the we. Moved the gun, or we've rotated the gun. We've got a moving tank, yada yada yada. We roll a two. It is not a critical hit. It's not even a yes. hit. You, you, well, that's right. If you okay, don't okay. get a hit, if you, if you didn't get a hit, then you didn't get a critical hit. Right. Okay. That because that's the first line in six point one. Right. 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 Okay. But, then, then, but then his case continued. Let's say it was the second shot. Okay. And the, the vehicle. Oh, oh, I, I, right. I, I'm well. I'm. I, I'm okay. No, I just. Aware of the I just yeah. yeah. Yeah, I just want to make sure that everybody else knew that as well. So right. that was it. Because yeah. it's because in because because in in full ASL, that still could be possibly a hit, or could still be possible a critical hit. Yes, that's that's correct. There is the what do they call it? Um, improbable. Improbable. Improbable hit. Right. Yeah. Or you didn't get a hit, but maybe you did because it'll. <laughs> so exactly. Okay. okay. Thank you. So let's uh, let's go to the ITC instead. So pull out a uh, pull out a German quad stew, and uh, and I'm not looking at the board there. So let's say we've got this German squad, and it's moving through a building, All right? And the AT gun has to change its covered arc, and he rolls a three. Does he get a critical hit? So do the math. What are all the modifiers that get applied to? Well, let's let's um, hold on for a second. Let me make sure I brought in all the correct things I wanted to say here. The AT gun is so, still in the building, right? Um, let's let's put the AT gun in in the open. Make it, uh, the math a little bit more interesting. Yep. So AT gun's in the open, and it changes its covered arc, and. Um, Let's have the the squad moving in the open. Oh, okay. So the that gun one. the gun changes its covered arc. The squad's moving in the open, and uh, and you roll a three. Is it a critical hit? I say yes. Okay. So let's do the math. So what's the um, modifier for changing the covered arc? 
plus. Okay, all right. So you want to go with that. So, so it's plus yeah, three plus to change three. the colored arc one hexafine. Yep. Yep. Right, plus three for that. And then what are the other modifiers that are applied to it? Minus two for moving in the open, non assault movement. I assume he's doing non assault, non -assault movement. He's yes, yes. That. Yeah. correct. Yep. So you roll a three, and the. He, he, uh, he only gets the non assault movement, right? Well, I said moving in the open. Right, but and if you I, get a. I didn't specify non assault, but non assault. So you get minus one non assault, minus one moving in the open, plus three for changing the R, uh, covered R. Okay. So the total change or the net uh, modifiers is a plus one. Uh, so he's not going to get it. He's just short. Right. So you rolled a three and you look at the chart and you're like, ah, I got a critical hit. Eh, not quite because it's final die roll, right? Right. So let's uh, modify our example a little bit. Maybe your um, give me a second here. Uh, what if we take that example and say that the um, the MMC, the squad, is um, moving in the uh, guns covered arc and uh, in the open, not assault, right? And and you you're taking the shot and you roll a five. Is that a critical hit? Roll to five, it's not a three, right? With no covered arc change, right? No covered arc change. So I got minus two. So I'd say at three hexes, it's yes. still a three. So yes, it is, right? Five down two is a three. Yes, it is. So oftentimes, you know, you're going to be focused on that, that raw die roll. You roll a three and you're like, oh, I got a critical hit when it's not. Or you roll a five and you don't think twice about it. Like, yeah, okay, I just got a hit. I'll roll in the four chart when you really got a critical hit. So, right. even though it looked like a five and you're like, yeah, didn't get it. So, um, so you really got to watch those numbers and those modifiers and do the math to, to ensure that you got the critical hit. So, uh, yeah, and understand that it's the final dice roll, not the original final dice. dice roll, the final right. dice roll. That's huge. Final dice roll, the infantry target type. Right. Yeah, and that, that's the key thing that always throws right. me off, is yeah. it's a final die roll for infantry target type, but it's the original die roll, assuming you get a hit, on the area target type and vehicle target type. Yeah, take, take, take the example that he's in, it. say he's in a building, like in PR3, and you have negative two acquisition on him. So... Right. Could you get a critical hit if he's in the building with a negative two acquisition? And what would you need to roll at a range of zero, of, at a range of three to six? At the range I have on the map, range of four. If you rolled, if you rolled snake eyes, then your total modifiers would be plus one, minus two for the acquisition, plus three for the stone building. All right. So that would mean a three, which was, which is less than half of the. Um, the original to hit number, <laughs> uh, I think, right. is quote the quote the fine print of the ASL rule, and or the ASL SK rule actually, and uh, and so yes, so so you roll the three, uh, your final your final die roll, your final to hit number is a three, therefore you in fact score a critical hit. All right, let's and, say and let's say on what you said there, Mark. Actually, the the SK rule book doesn't say less than half of the two hit number. The, the SK oh, rule book says the right, number yeah. in parentheses. Yeah, yeah that's right. true. So that's does true. All SK players a favor, and I put that in quote in quotes. Yeah. Um, <laughs> by doing the math for us, uh, yeah. because we all know that ASL players uh, miscalculate the critical hit number for the ITT forever. I don't want to say, well, when when there's, they forget to consider modified for, you know, two hit number. And, you know, they, they, oftentimes, I'd say more often than not, the number that they come up with is correct, but they did the math wrong. Right. So, uh, but sometimes they'll do the math wrong and come up with the wrong answer. Right. So for, in SK, they did the math for us, so we don't have to worry about it. Just look at the number in the parentheses. No, ex extending that same example, the the... 447 uh, that I have cloned here moves out to Q3 
the acquisition can do what to that unit? There's an 8 0 remaining in the hex, and the clone moves out in the open ground. What can the gun do with the 8 acquisition? Can it, can it go with the unit, or does it have to stay in the hex? It can follow the unit. Does it have to follow the unit? No. Okay. So you have a choice. So let's say it follows the unit. Now he's in open ground at a range of three. What does he need to critical hit him at that instance? The minus four total modifiers. So you could roll a seven. A seven, gentlemen. So the, 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 the takeaway lesson here is if you have acquisition, what do you not want to do in front of a gun? <laughs> you don't want you, 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 don't, <laughs> you don't want to move an open ground. You just yeah, so, run the hell away. <laughs> well, let's move on with that. Uh, you, if the opponent gets a critical hit, what is the impact? How is that resolved? Um, the critical hit is um, you use, uh, all right, so you look on the IFT, you, you look at the top, uh, you find the millimeter factor, which case 37, so it's resolved, normally resolved on the four firepower table. However, a critical hit, you double that, so you're now right. on the eight table. And, and, if that, and if that unit's moving through a building. Yeah, if the unit is moved, yes, uh, any positive modifiers that existed for the unit, uh, any positive, what, any positive TEMs or indeed any, is it, is it just TEM or is it any modifier, any positive modifier? Well, that's, I you know, just... I mean, I don't... for what? I think it says positive modifier. Well, neg all negative modifiers are still applied. I think it's just TEM. All negative modifiers normally, which would not be applied because they were applied on the to hit roll, are right. in fact applied. Right. And any positive modifiers turn into negative modifiers. Um, it says Tim. It specifies Tim. Furthermore, any positive TEM that the target would normally be entitled to is okay. referred as a negative die roll modifier to the okay. RT. Yeah, so hindrance was wouldn't affect, but and this isn't in a lot of SK, but would a would a hedge or a wall? Is that I was I just get confused if uh, a hedge or a wall is considered TEM or not. Yeah, the TEM for hedge is plus one. Right. And wall is a plus two. Or for that matter, let's say shell holes. There's no shell yeah, holes. Shell holes would be plus one, right. And so yeah. so that would become minus one. Minus one. Right. Okay, so it is just TEM. So if you're uh, yeah, so so if that unit's moving through the building and you get a critical hit. It's a minus three for the building, and if we're assuming non-assault movement, there's another minus one. So suddenly now you've got an eight minus four shot. That's that's gold. Well, is uh, technically assault movement is a dice roll modifier instead of a TEM. Yeah, and it's already applied to the two hit. So um, except to the IFT resolution. No, it it says it specifically says that. Uh, the positive TEM modifiers are negative, and any other two hit and uh, IFT die roll modifiers, negative modifiers, are still applied to include. Oh, okay. So it says that, yeah. So yeah, because um, that's 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 another thing that um, can be confusing in time. And matter of fact, you know, just the terminology is just confusing, just as a standard for ASL. Uh, TEM and dice roll modifier are not exactly the same. All TEMs. Modify the dice, but all dice roll modifiers are not temps. Right. So um, the same thing with vehicles, right? A moving vehicle is not a motion vehicle, and a non-stopped vehicle could still be moving, and a stopped vehicle could also be considered moving. And so, you know, a lots of those things have to come into your mind. The problem is they use those those the terminology. It's like, hey, I stopped. I'm not real, no longer any moving. Well. If you entered a hex, you are considered moving regardless of if you stopped or not. So um, the yeah, definition yeah, of moving is if you entered another hex. So you could technically, you know, stop in your hex. And um, yeah, 
quoted from the rule book furthermore any positive tem that is that the target would normally be entitled to for two hit or ift purposes is reversed and applied as a negative Airburst, FFMO, FF, uh, and non-assault moments still apply as negative DRM if applicable, in addition to the effects of the critical hit. So if you critical hit if applicable is the key there, right? So I don't think if you're moving in the open, that's already been applied to the two hit number. I don't no, think but it, but applicable. It, it's applicable. That's that's he's they're saying if applicable as in I used assault movement, so non-assault movement is not applicable. So if I'm moving through a stone building, you get minus four. Yeah, yeah, I disagree. I, I think that would be worth asking Perry, but I, I don't think that. My guess is that's not what they're getting at there. Yeah, usually everyone just that just just uh takes the uh the plus three modifier. Of course, that's probably that may be from an ASL perspective as well. Um, you'd have to you'd have to dig at, dig into it, but I understand what you're saying because I. Well, I well, yeah, I but mean, because you know, it does say airburst is, yeah, you know, right? FFMO, airburst, FFMO, FFNAM still apply as negative DRM in addition to the effects of the CH. So is it so, air? Yeah. So is it airburst yeah. minus two? Airburst is minus no, one. No, it would just be minus one. Well, the the, the air... because the well the airburst is associated with the with the woods, so. The woods is already a minus. Oh yeah, it, it converts the plus one to a minus one. So the, technically, the TEM is a minus one. Right. And therefore, it would be keeping the minus one modifier. Right. Yeah. Exactly. So, yeah. So if that if that reading is correct, then if you're moving, if you're non-assault moving in a stone building and you get hit with a critical hit, it's minus four. Yeah, I think so. So let's that. let's just, we'll 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 put a pin in that one and we can discuss it later. So let's move on. Let's say the target is actually you got a leader moving with that squad and and you roll um you get a you get that critical hit. How is that resolved? That was good. I was hoping you were going in this direction, Craig. <laughs> we got to pick one guy, right? So you go do random selection to figure out who Random is. selection. So let's say you roll a to. three on the IFT. What is the result? And and you're going to randomly select. So what happens? All right. So we got the 37L, the 37L, which normally resolves on the four FT column, right? Yep. So just to give everybody an impression. And where, where, and, and are we in the stone building or not? Yes, in the stone, moving through the stone building. All right. So, do you mind if I move the counters just for a moment here? Uh, yeah. Move the clone guy. Move the clone guy and the other guys. It's fine. All right. So, so this this guy right here. Uh, All right. yeah. All right. So we'll move him into here just so that he just so that he's technically in the stone building. Okay. So, oh, uh, we'll need a clone. We'll need a cloned eight zero leader there as well. All right. Go ahead and do that. Yeah. Just move him in there. Yeah. Uh, okay. All right. So, so they're having a bad day. <laughs> okay. So, all right. So I just wanted to clear everything up. Okay. So let's 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 ask the class. Okay. What what happened? So you rolled a three on the IFT. What is the result? Who won the random selection? Well, right now, it, let's just say it doesn't matter. Oh, this was the two what, hit roll, or is this the IFT? No, no, roll? this is the IFT roll. You roll well, one guy, one person, roll. one one's dead. Oh, one I of them's gonna be dead. Yeah. Okay, so what what is the roll result off the IFT if you roll a three? Oh, just on the three directly without any modifier. Well, it, that hex is going to be impacted by the result of a three roll. What what are the results? That well, for the, the critical hit, it's a three KIA. The guy three that gets KIA three. for everybody? No, just for the guy that absorbs a critical hit. You have to okay. do random selection the, to pick and one. How about for the other guy? I'm going to add three, one, two, three. That gives me a one morale check. No, the other guy, remember. Oh, guy no, it's a flat. Two. I'm sorry, it's a flat because right. it's an IMP. Yep, yeah, sorry. So it's a K2. Why, why would it be uh, why it's a flat? It, it's on the eight chart. You rolled a three. Oh, it's not on the eight chart. I'm sorry. The one guy that didn't do the critical hits on the four chart. So three on right. the, he gets the two morale check. Sorry. Right. Yeah. Right. It's not on the eight chart. It's on the four chart because it's not a critical hit. And it's a plus two move, moving through the building, right? 
and the randomly selected unit suffers a critical hit, so it's on the eight chart, and you get the minus three for the building, and and then depending on how we resolve the, uh, the it also get the minus one for the non-assault movement. So just one of those units is going to suffer the key, even though you got a three KIA, and one of them is going to die, right? One of them dies, the other one takes two morale check. If it's the leader oh. that dies, then the, of course the squad will have to take a take a, another morale yeah. check. Right. Leader so morale. regardless of the number of targets in a location hit by a critical hit, the special provisions of a critical hit apply only to one randomly determined target. Okay. So and let's let's say you uh, for whatever reason you know when you were firing this gun, uh, you fired on the area target type and you hit and you got a critical hit. What column do you, uh, what chart are you rolling on? Area target type is halved, right? Correct. So but. is it four? Do you double the half or do you double the normal? Silence in the crowd. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Go ahead. <laughs> Go ahead. Go ahead, Mark. You're, you're itching. Oh, okay. All right. Yes. It, it, I'm sorry. Okay. Yes. So it, it would be it would be uh, double the original, not double the halved. So Correct. so the so the unit who gets the critical hit, it's still resolved on the eight column. However, the unit that does not get the critical hit is in, is 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 resolved on the two column. Because the target type. Right. Right. Exactly. So, so, so in that case, the other unit would take a one morale check, not a two morale check. Yeah. Yep. So last question related to the critical hit. If the critical hit is against uh, your target is a gun with manning infantry, what is the effect? Destroys the gun. Anything else? And the Manning Infantry. And the Manning Infantry. Yep. So you don't even have to roll on the IFT. You get a critical hit on a gun, poof, they're gone. What if there's another squad in that hex? What if there's a, a, a crew manning a gun and another squad in that hex and you get a critical hit? So that's a, that's a good question. So what's the critical hit against, I guess? You have to randomly select, right? So I'd asked that one time, and the answer I got was, "Nope, the gun and the crew are gone. The gun and the crew are gone. They don't have to be randomly selected." I'm not yeah, sure I've, I've I've answer, but, but answer, it wasn't clear. It, there it wasn't clear to in, me. Yeah, there may be a uh, in Perry says or something, but uh, I don't know. In SK, just you know, it says if you get a critical hit, you have to randomly select the target. And yeah. I don't. I don't see anything in the SK rules that says except when there's a gun, and then you get that. So, oh, critical, uh, yeah, critical against a gun automatically destroys a gun and it's manning infantry. All right. They would have to be selected in random selection. So the question is, is what's the definition of against? I yeah. guess. They would have to be selected as being uh, the subject of the critical hit. That, that's the way that I read the SK rule. I don't know what sense. the ASL rules are, but that's the way I read SK. All right. The only difference with being is if you're like attacking a vehicle, let's say you're attacking a vehicle with high explosive, um, then if, if you, because you have to target the vehicle to affect it, if you roll a critical hit on the vehicle, there is the random, so there is no random selection on any other units in the hex. It simply strikes the vehicle with a critical hit. And then you normally have the collateral damage applied to the crew, and, you know, assuming it's not moving and things like that. And I think that would that would make sense because you're firing on the vehicle target type, not not on the right. Area. Yeah, you I, have if to. If you yeah. were if you were firing on the area target type, then I think you would have to choose your target that got the critical hit. Yeah, it would have to be selected. Hey, I got a question, guys. What if let's go back to the squad with the gun in the? How many targets when you're rolling random selection? Are there, are there two potential victims, or are there three? Do you do the crew, the gun, and the squad treat those separately, or would you just Lump the the crew 
the gun together with the squad. So you just roll two dice to see who wins. Uh, I would, I would, oh, good question. I, I guess my idea would be to lump it together simply because if you roll the critical hit, you know, it, it, let's say it just contains the gun and the crew, I would assume that the rule would be, hey, it doesn't matter. You got the critical hit. You eliminate both of them. I don't, I, I don't think I would ever roll in that case to see, oh, did I hit the crew or did I hit the gun? Yeah, right. I would agree because it specifically says if you get a critical hit against a gun, yeah, you eliminate both the gun and the manning, uh, crew, uh, manning infantry. I didn't yeah. say crew, manning yeah. infantry. Yeah, so, but you, yeah. Maybe, maybe, yeah, it may be interesting in that case. It may, you may have to do a random, I don't know. Do you, yeah, if, I mean, you if, you're, if you're rolling for random selection and you get a tie, do they both get a critical hit? No, well, not, no not an SK. How about no a, how about not SK? Yes. Okay, thanks. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, the, the, the correct term is you yell Yahtzee. And, um, mm -hmm. and in which case, every unit that rolls that highest number gets affected, with exceptions. Sniper is an exception, but um, but in this particular case, the critical hit, yeah, everybody everybody would be everybody who rolled that highest roll would be affected by the critical hit. All right. The the, the last time I I want to bring up, and this was already answered, but for those who either haven't watched the video or or weren't in the room. Um, if the uh, rather than a gun firing, it was a machine gun, and uh, firing at a at that panzer, and you rolled snake eyes, you got the hit. Is it a critical hit? No, it is not. Machine guns cannot attain a critical hit. That's uh, in the rule, as Mark and I uh, had pulled out. It's been discussed in Tactical Tuesday before. It's not listed amongst the uh, weapons that can attain a critical hit. And in the chart, as John correctly uh, observed, uh, it says uh, machine gun NA for critical hit. Yeah. In but fact, it's, but it's always good to review these rules. And the chart. And the chart. Yeah, and the charts. Yeah. Um, now, do you mind if I take the example just a little bit further? Oh, please do. I'm done. Okay, so let's let's go back to the um, let's go back to the infantry squad there. Okay, so however you resolve the critical hit, let's assume let's just assume the leader the leader you know the leader bit it, the squad broke but survived. Its leader lost task check. Okay, so let's just say he's broken. Okay, how much um, now? Let's also assume that uh, for for purposes of this conversation, the AT gun rolled a four on the color die and a one on the white die okay so because it rolled a four on the colored die it does not retain rate therefore what happens in that hex in the target hex uh, what happens in the target hex if you if infantry fire in there during the during the uh during the movement phase oh residual. residual residual okay so how much residual is put into that hex. Ah, yes, thank you. The highest column used on the IFT, right? So would it be based on their crit? Well, in this case, I don't know if you know if you want to crit if it's a critical hit. If it's not a critical hit, it's just it a critical hit. We assume it was a critical hit. Yes. It was uh, a critical. So you use the highest, don't you? you? Use the highest, which which somewhat surprised me, you know. But uh, but yeah, you do use the highest number. So you resolved on the eight. So eight have the four. So you place four residual there. Even though technically only one unit got hit by the, um, uh, only one unit got affected by the critical, it still is interesting that it's, you know, that um, that you do place, yeah, you do use the eight as the as the number as the FP to place the residual. So you place four in there. So I think that's uh, that's our discussion on critical hit. Yeah, we'll go on to continuing our regular, regularly scheduled Good. program. Good <laughs> stuff, Craig. Uh, bigger, yeah, very absolutely. Uh, very cool. Um, you have to check that. Out. Okay, very cool. Yeah, very very important. Critical hits can be really 
easily confused and what you get simply because they may or may not happen often and because of the dice roll modifiers that apply to your to hit dice roll you may misinterpret them as not happen happening when they should be happening or happening when they shouldn't be happening you know uh, yeah. when people just see a two or a three hey that's a critical hit because it's lower than the dice roll whereas they see a five or seven they don't even consider it being a critical hit because it's not in the parentheses where it's the final dice roll. They have to take it to the next step, not only what the dice roll say, but it's the final dice roll within that um, application of, of being able to be hit with a critical hit shot. So yeah, uh, guns, and that's where that's where your, at least your artillery pieces and your ordnance weapons shine versus infantry, at least if you, even if you have critical, not even critical hit on them, even if you just move in the open with no acquisition. I mean, within within a six hex range, you're looking pretty much at a five with no hindrances and no covered arc change for a critical hit. And that's a pretty high chance to get 25% chance of critting that guy. And most of your guns are going to be like 75s standard, you know, in most scenarios, 75s or, you know, 40s or whatever. And you're talking like 24 firepower. So it's pretty dangerous, which reiterates the need for even more smoke because smoke... Simply smoke will reduce all the or will increase those mo that dice roll modifier, right? The plus two smoke, even if you're moving behind it, it's still going to be a plus one. So instead of a minus two, it's going to be a plus one. So he'd have to roll like a snake eyes at a range of three to three, three to six, just about you know, snake eyes versus a five. So, I mean, add up all those variables there and uh you see even just the placement of infantry smoke uh can make a big difference and that might be one of the few times where even with these four six sevens that you see with the one exponent it might be worth trying that guy to drop some smoke before he starts to move and um that way you can uh alleviate any potential critical hit from any units that are you know that need to get the hell out of dodge so but um but uh, yeah, critical hits are very, and, and and people miss screw up critical hits, regardless how long you've been playing. You've been playing short period of time, long period of time. I don't even know when I critical hit. I just got to figure it out. Most of the time, I just I'm lucky. I even try to even get a slant chance of even hitting. So, but um, but yeah, sometimes it's you're surprised by some of the critical hits that actually happen to roll your way. So it's kind of it's kind of interesting that that's that's the case. So um, so let's continue with the um. The scenario, uh, it's Sink's encouragement from the Russian ASL group. I think we have Craig's Craig's game at the end of the uh, end of the match. So um, again, I'm just going to burn through these, and I want I'm going to uh, you're going to see here. So we've got our artillery placements at the, at the three critical spots. Right hand side, he actually gets two targets. So we'll go through here. So we got a DM, a DM in the center, a DM on the left, a DM in the center, and a DM on the right. And let's see, just taking that into consideration, let's see how this game progresses. I'm going to kind of scoot it along pretty quickly here. You know, these guys going to make advances. And simply because those guys got busted up in the middle, look what happens in the center. I mean, they get free, they, they get the free reign right in the middle. And you've got your, uh, like your meeting machine gun over here. This guy was fired at, and he simply just moves up because no one else can fire on him. So again, three squads broke in the beginning. The Germans or the Americans are taking casualties. Tell me about this route right here. Over here on the right hand side, in terms of tactics. You got a broken unit here. You've got a full squad medium machine gun here. When this unit has to route, what's his route destination? Closest in movement factors. Okay, so where would that be in, in this in this example? I think it is the woods. Okay. Yeah, I would agree. Would you route the entire duration? No. You're getting too far away from your objective. Right. Yeah, he's... You, can, you can just sit with the 8-1 and you can rally. Right. He's super safe back here. I mean, we all agree with that, right? <clears throat> this squad, let's say this unit moves out of line of sight, this squad firing down here is going to be a six plus four. Uh, that still uh, that still is enough to DM you. 
but it's not really going to get you a, a, a an attack resolution against that particular unit. It will still be DM'd. He will still need a six to rally, so that's not that big a deal. But uh, if you if you intend to move the medium over here, rot him back. If you intend to move the medium here, just rot him to T7 because he's not going to fire on T7 when the medium's looking at you. So that's something to consider when you route back. Some people just route, this is this might be one of those instances, I'm not sure if it is or not, that the, uh, the routing back maximum hexes. I don't think it is, simply because I reviewed the log and uh, what well, we've got, let's see. Let's take a look at this route here on the left-hand side. Again, I always like to pull up routing because routing is very important. Where, what's this unit's destination? You might have more than one. Um, N3 or J6? Uh, J5. Uh, J5 is a little close, uh, slightly closer to the oh, 9 minus yep. 2. Five, yep, oh, yep. Yeah. It, it looks clean, but it's closer. So, the, but yeah, that's 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 one that I would point out that I would look at initially, and then so right. we're looking at N three or this location, or even O uh, even O five depends if we can see this unit. Uh, actually, we could see this unit, so we can't go up and then come back. So it would be one of these two locations, and then he could possibly continue to route from there. Let's look at the route path that he takes. Let's see. If it's legit so he wants to avoid interdiction right he doesn't want to be well he's not going to be interdicted by this unit anyway why yeah cx, CX. let's say he's not cx okay because i think they th i think they thought he was going to be interdicted but let's say he's not cx and he takes this route here so he says he goes right to it so instead well okay come on jeez. oh my god oh okay that's what happened so he did move uh, i'm not sure uh, the backing up. So, uh, it's just stupid Basil logs. He went here, 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 and then here, and then ended. Would that be a legal route path if N3 was his destination? If N3 is his destination, he can either, he has to either low crawl or he has to get there. Right, right. That's the point is he, he even though this is, this is a nice route that you can be able to take, um, although he can't quite go up to there, um, uh, to take a longer route to avoid interdiction, you still have to be able to make it to your destination when you take that longer route. Now, obviously, if it were something like this, this is one, two, three, four hexes away, right? So let's say he could do an end around. Let's say the building is an N4, he wants to route to N4, and he does an end around like this. Would that be a legal route? Let's say N4 was his destination because that's a woods hex, and he wants to, he has to route to there. Could he go L5, L4, M4, N4, staying out of line of sight to this unit other than the initial hex? Yes. Uh, unfortunately, no. No? Because what? once once you get to L4, you're now three hexes away. Okay, so therefore you have to stay at least three hexes away from this unit for the rest of your route. Once you go there, oh, yeah. you're... Right, yeah. this would come back to two hexes versus three, so that would be illegal. So you'd have to go direct in that case. And that's what they that's what they picked up right here. They uh, uh, The initial move you saw up here, and instead they went click, 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 like that. And he says, oh, no, you have to go direct. And uh, I'm not sure. I, the log's probably screwed up, unfortunately. But uh, that's just, uh, the, you know, the route destination. He should be here, and I think he was there. I think that's just a log screwed up. So uh, uh, note what's happening here. The the front, essentially the front line of the Germans was destroyed by artillery fire. You got an Aaron, you know, the right-hand side. First fire, the Germans are trying to recoup, which is fine. Americans are pushing hard. Look where the Americans are at the beginning of turn two. And that simply is just a condition of the artillery breaking three units. Americans really haven't done anything. They simply move because there are all broken German units. So we're burning through here. Uh, we advance fire, you know, fire a little bit. This guy breaks. He does a low crawl back there. Uh, yeah, because he'd probably have to face interdiction here, which is bad news for him, right? If he's, if he's low crawl in the open, what are we staring at next turn? 
that's a six minus one. Uh, at that point, uh, you might uh, you might want to take a, a an addiction check. Six minus one, you'd be taking one morale check on average. So the the if you if you were to let's see what a six minus one would be. A six minus one is a one morale check on average. So in that case, you are. Uh, so if we were to take interdiction, let's say we go to R four, this is this destination, or we go to over to P three. Either one, I don't care which direct destination we take. <coughs> Instead of the low crawl, we take the interdiction. Is that a better choice than taking a shot next turn from this guy here at a six minus one? What do you guys think? Do we do we do we give him that free interdiction check, that free morale check, running across the road, with our leader? Remember, if we fail the morale check, leader dies. Yeah, definitely not with the leader. Definitely not. Okay, what do we what do we need what do we need to pass a morale check in that location in Q four? Well, you can use the leader modifier, so you'd need an eight. An eight. Right. All right. Let's say if that was let's say. Um, yeah, nine minus two is gonna make a difference. So I was gonna say something else that doesn't exist. So I'm not gonna say something that doesn't exist. Uh, so yes, an eight would pin you there. They both be pinned. Uh, he would have an eight. Essentially, uh, an eight minus one would be enough for this unit to pass morale. And the leader, well, it doesn't really matter that this unit would not take Cal's reduction, and therefore the leader would not be a victim to uh, failing the um, <clears throat> the the route. So we need an eight to survive, we need a seven to continue. When the American unit fires on us next turn, or this unit fires on us next turn, well, in this case, there, there are gonna be two potential shots because I'm not taking a six up three, I'm taking a six down one is what I'm taking. You know, I'm probably firing this unit first. Uh, well, I think this unit is over here um, because that's where the leader is. Because so he's got no shots, he only has one shot, and then I would say this later. So a six down one, if your rolls a seven, which is an average, could be a one morale check. Now your leader needs to take a morale check, which is a seven. And then if he rolls a seven, he is pinned and therefore cannot use his modifier against our squad. The squad would then need a six to be okay. So he is much more vulnerable by not taking the interdiction morale check and instead running across the road. The same thing would apply if this was a conscript unit. Okay, if that was a four, three, six broken conscript, right? Or hell, for that matter, this four, four morale unit here. You know, here you're probably going to lose the leader. If you don't route, if the leader doesn't route with him because it was the American's player turn, where was the American leader? The, Amer the, the German leader was right here anyway. He's going to get jumped in close combat seven to one odds. He's dead anyway. I mean, he's simply dead anyway. At that point, you know, low crawl here. At the, he might low crawl one there, one there, probably, I, I don't know. He's he's doomed as it, as it is. Because um, this unit would have to, if to uh, pass his morale check with a minus one, highly risky. Uh, you're looking at bad stuff. If he had a five morale, you might think about, again, simply because of what the situation is in this particular game. Um, desperate situations can acquire desperate times. Conscript units are always bad. Uh, a seven morale unit, I would definitely, I would definitely take that morale check going across the street, uh, simply because uh, what I need to keep my leader alive is what I need to keep my squad alive. If it goes down like the four, you need to roll a uh, five for that thing to survive. If you roll a six, he dies and he takes a CR. So it's a, uh, it's bad news, but. Um, but if he, if you fire a morale check, at least he'll break most likely to six minus one. The squad's going to die anyway. So the slightly better squad, <clears throat> in this case, if your chances are better taking the morale check versus what what he's got out in the open, take the interdiction, take the interdiction. So we're going to burn through spore. Again, the routing's always always kind of crazy like this. So the Germans, uh, the Americans at the end of the German turn two have command uh, total control of the uh, village. So. The Germans uh, don't have a chance of pretty much taking it back. I don't think they do. Uh, and this is where it's, this is where it just becomes a slugfest. Fire, 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 pop, pop, pop. You got one unit break, and every single German unit that breaks is pretty much just going to be gonzo. We do have a kill stack up here, but the Americans don't kill about it. 
care about it because he has to come back across the road. And then we just fire on him, and then we pin a guy, and he has no firepower. And, and then, yeah, he has to assault, move, advance, fall, and he breaks, and this is pretty much over. So, again, just the development of the game. Three units break because our artillery was good. The Americans essentially get a free ride. We'll roll over the Germans in this scenario. Let's pop up another one. Let's go with this one here. This might be slightly different. Okay, cool. All right, go ahead and sync with me. I'm good. <clears throat> wow. This guy's giving the Americans a lot of good targets to blow up. Remember, the uh, the uh, special special rule with the acquisition markers attacks is a 16 chart that attacks the the hex that it's in and all hexes that are adjacent. And so there's a lot of dub double hexes that the Americans can drop it in here. So we're going to fire through this. Hopefully you guys are all resynced. So the Americans do what they need to do is put them in double spots everywhere. So he's got lots of... Legitimately, if the Americans get lucky, the, Amer the Germans can start the game with one good order squad. So it behooves the Germans to kind of spread out a little bit or hope to get lucky. Look, we got a snake... Uh, well, I think there's a snake eyes on one. So these guys are pin DM... Pin DM and no effect against anybody else. So very lucky on the German side. So let's see how the Americans fare with one broken unit and one pinned unit. Medium is up and going. LMG, LMG completely, completely working. Again, we're not going to, if you guys see something about like a route path or something crazy like that. So we got a good flank going on here. kind of like the idea behind that. And that will come into play as we discussed uh, last week. <clears throat> um, one of the scenarios will show exactly what I was discussing last week in terms of slugfests. Good smoke usage to try and get up there. Uh, German unit, the low crawls, tries to low crawl across the street. Uh, I'd probably be blasting the living crap out of him. Considering everything on the left-hand side is gone, those guys are essentially out of the game, and you only have this over here, and there, there are no German casualties other than a broken unit that I know of. So we got prep fires. They're just keeping them DM'd so they can't ever rally. Then our leader breaks in the middle. Bad news. We have a nine minus two, one squad, and it's one squad but, but between them. And he has to. This is ally turn three. He tries to end the round. They try to get a little closer. We do get, we do get a rally. Americans or Germans break a little bit in the center. A little bit of pin. A little bit of damage going on. Drop some smoke. Could use smoke just to obtain that that location without having to the, the uh, not assault movement perhaps. So, and then the Germans still have a ton of guys over here, right? We don't have a flank. We don't have a flank attack on them. And then this is a uh, Axis turn four, and you know there's no point an Ally turn five. I'm not sure why this came on. Uh, yeah, I'll get everything. So uh, Ally turn five is irrelevant. You can't. He's not going to be able to take all these buildings. I mean, it's, 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 he just got broken bodies, just the broken guys. You know, this guy, if he breaks, he just routes back here. You know, pretty much it. So, no effect on the artillery makes it really hard for the Americans. Next one. Let's go. Oh, here's, here's, a, here's another, here, here's, I think here's the good one. Slightly different than the other ones. Remember, the first one had very good effects, easy American victory. Second one, almost no effect, difficult American. Uh, fight. This one's probably a little bit, of, a little bit of both. This one has three broken units. Bam, bam, bam. Very effective. And this one is the concept of making sure your units, your enemy, cannot ra rally on you. So Americans uh, are establishing power positions. These guys have to route, route backwards so they don't get shot. Right? They probably want to route safely. Americans have it jammed into the center of the, the the map we do have a well this medium's out of commission too so we've got half squad out of commission out of commission squad 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 that's it that is all so let's see what happens he moves over gets blasted he even gets blasted assault moves hopefully his assault moved and then he just routes back again does he care <coughs> if his aim was to get across the street if he yeah. assaults move here and he breaks, guess where he is? He's back with the leader. 
and uh, he may end up in N3 with another DM, but at least he's across the street, and he got to where he wanted to go, and he couldn't even get there at the beginning of the turn anyway. So if the Americans want to fire on this unit, which I would probably want to do that, but they might not even have a line of sight from either of these units. They might not even have a line of sight to that unit. So they have to get someone in position, and we've got a couple covering units that will hopefully try and stop that. So again, you say, hey, Stu, why did he leave the building? He was safe in the building. Well, I'm not sure staring down a uh, 16 plus 2 is safe uh, or a guy over here. So um, take the break. The 16 minus 1 can't even see you in that location. A 9 minus 2 might, but he may have fired on that one. So most likely the 7 guy is going to blast this guy over here. So uh, so again, he just draws back, and we'll see what happens. Double-click those stacks so, so you could keep track of those broken units. Our medium is up and going, so he's defending the village. This guy gets vaporized. Let me back up just a second. Hopefully this won't screw up. I'm sure it will. And... Come on. I'm going slow. You have to go slower. It doesn't like you. Okay. He wants to get over here somewhere, right? Most likely, I think he wants to get to M6. Order movement, gentlemen. Right? We have Americans. We have smoke. Both of these guys prep fired. They got no results. I'm not sure if they fired on him or they got no results on this lo location here. So, <clears throat> we've got this unit moving here. Oh, shit, that screwed up. This stupid-ass log file. Yeah, wonderful log file. Anyway, this leader here moved up here, then here. This unit moved over here first. Then this leader moved with a stack to here, which is a clear line of sight to there. If he wants to, if, if he could have moved up here, he would have been out of a line of sight to that unit. Getting to this location is not that really that big a deal. You'll send your half squad there like most people will. This will be out of line of sight, but it's not at out of line of sight to that unit, but it is long range. So that'll be a two even shot. It's respectable. Excuse me. But moving to M9 is a problem. If you want to move to M9, you still can move to M9. What's one way we can get to M9? safely let's say he wants to get to 08 because if he gets to n8 then the machine gun probably can't see him let's say the machine gun can't see me in n8 this squad instead of prep firing because you don't want to prep fire with the nine minus two leader right because you can't get the minus two bonus he's going to be a six plus three his only target is a six plus three how about we hold him and drop a smoke here okay does it does it affect the shot over here does this smoke affect the medium shot on this unit in M9? No, right? No. It's only going to affect the 447. Why do we want to block the 447? Why do we want to block the 447's potential shot to somewhere down here? Well, because we can move either of these units into 09, which will not be in minus two in the open. And this unit over here probably can't see him. And then we can enter 08 and drop smoke in 07. So you see how that works? You move one of these guys first. Even double time this guy back here. One, two, three, four. What do we need to drop smoke in 07? Uh, one or two. One or two. It's not bad. A four doesn't make it. Who cares? We've got the victory location. We're not moving any further anyway. Nine minus one moves in there. Normal movement drops a smoke. Doesn't get anything. So what? At that point, the eight minus one, if he still wants to come this to well, these guys already have the building. Then the eight minus one can scoot around this way. He still has the orchard. Every single cover, remember, minus two versus zero. Because this is a two even shot. This is an eight minus potentially eight minus three. So even eight zero or eight minus three is a huge difference on whether you're going to survive or not. So, and even so, let's say he moves and wants to move the leader up. One, two, three. The squad can move there for three and then drop smoke with CXing. Let's see, let's see he wants to CX. Is one, two, three. 
again, four or five, it's a die roll one or two, doesn't get it, so what? But the idea is this shot is ineffective. A six plus three is far, far a terrible shot. Consider you want these units to move up to get in position for better shots. Either, and if these two units stack up into 08, this unit's gone. This unit's not going to do anything against that. But this smoke will allow these units to get up there to destroy that unit, or even this unit, because that's a straight line of sight. So, And it also protects movement into 08. I didn't even see that, because the smoke hits this he he hex side, which is part of Q5's line of fire directly into Q8. So any movement into 08 is going to be a plus three for the building, minus one non-assault movement, plus two smoke. It's going to be a plus four. It's, 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 it, you're pretty damn well protected. So order of movement in that instance uh, cost the Americans uh, like a squad and a leader. I think he lost a leader too, and it's all jacked up here. This is bullshit. Uh, my smoke is not there. Sorry about that. I think the Americans are over here. So just watch the Germans. So we're firing, and you'll see a bunch of prep fire markers. First fire, prep fire. Germans are kind of lined up. Americans are prep firing across the street. Germans break. All right? Germans break. Retreat. Prep fire. A little bit of fire fire on the side. The Germans fill up the front. Germans break. Allies break. Have we seen any smoke yet? No smoke. Nope. So so for about two or three turns, we just fired and fired and fired and fired across the street. This is a huge stack. This will break everything it fires at. And it's done that. It's broken these units. It's broken these units. It's probably broken a unit over here. But we're not making any head hedgeway. Every time he breaks, he moves here. We can't fire on him. None of these guys have a line of sight over here. I think these guys got I think these guys got broken right here. So we can't stop the Germans from rallying, and that's where the end around, that's where that little bastard in the back comes into play. It stops route pass from going backwards. If you had a guy up in R3 or even a P1 or just wherever where you could harass these guys, then the Americans would then, when they break them, they'd have an opportunity to take advantage of those units breaking. Otherwise, they break, they retreat, rally, come back up, like you saw, break, retreat, rally, come back up, it's a very short game. You, you don't have time to, to blast across the street. Um, not that the saying the Americans could have won this one anyway, because he had a whole bunch of units down here that probably broke over here. Um, we just didn't see a lot of smoke. I just didn't see a lot of smoke in this one. And the artillery, the artillery was actually very effective in this one. It broke three units, I think. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, the, event, the Americans did take uh, positions good. I like this attack over here, but um, it just fell short just fell short on that one no smoke usage i didn't see any smoke used in that one and that's huge huge in that one okay let's go to another one let's go to erica eric and craig's this is the last one here okay so i'm i'm up and All look right. at the look at look how this defense is a little different than the other ones you've got the leaders in the back and uh why do you think the leaders in the back Uh, just maximum protection and just rally point. The only yeah. Thing they're going to be for. Yep. I'm thinking the leaders on the back just for rally points. That's my initial impression here. And if Craig, if, if Craig is, is is he's got time to chime in, he can do that. But uh, but we'll see. I don't even know who's who's who in this one here. So the artillery comes on there, comes on here. Well, they're going to place it there. And uh, I think the American player rearranges his units. He says, you know. Uh, I think we're going to take advantage of the orchards. That's kind of what it looks like. And what do we have over here? Uh, looks like yeah, I'm the American Stu. It didn't turn out too well, but yeah, that, that's that right. guy's over. Th that guy's over there to flank him. Yeah, that's all right. That's all right. He's technically off the board, so technically this unit should be right here. Oh, okay. Because that's not like a non-existent. But it doesn't matter. I want to point something out a little bit later. And this is based on the service. So the Americans uh, readjust over here. Not a problem. Again, don't rush your don't rush your setup. I, I like the concept of attacking these units in the back and leaving this guy alone. Why? Because these guys could just. I mean, he's a four four seven. What's he going to do? He's going to break one unit and then he's going to get destroyed. So set up these guys, blow these guys away in the back, and that could really take a chunk out of the Germans. 
at that point, you've got some Germans that may have to cross the road, which the Americans can take advantage of because the Americans are moving first, right? And they'll, they'll get to see the results of this. So no effect, one DM. Well, so we got one DM in this one here, gentlemen. We got a little guy over here. He's just sitting there. We got uh, some guys rushing over here, taking advantage of our hindrances here. Because this unit's line of fire straight down the row. So even Y10 is, is covered with a hindrance from here and the plus one from the end of this hindrance in the hedge. So that's that's one hell of a good attack. And this guy got broken too. So which really helped facilitate that approach on the right-hand side. So good deal there. Medium machine gun will have to, that LOS over here to any of these locations uh, is probably gonna be blocked. S6 looks pretty big. So Americans advance on the right-hand side. Uh, Americans advance a little bit in the middle, it gets pinned. Eight minus one just rolls straight up again because X8, First of all, he's first fired, or maybe fired. Maybe he did fire out at this guy here. But anyway, X8 is still covered by that orchard. So even if it's not, even if he did, even if that was a final fire on this particular unit, that's a four even shot. Still, still no negative twos. No negative twos have been given to the Germans so far. Very big, which is a lot of the conversation that I had down here from the previous games and the ones that we just covered today. Is this is all negative one, negative two shots you're giving the Germans? And you can't, I don't really think you could afford that. Um, <clears throat> not a big fan of jumping the residual, but it's only one residual. And he might need to put smoke here because that might be a part of his plan. So was that part of your plan? Craig? Oh, I don't think so. I think oh. I just uh, wanted to advance. Okay. So it's one residual. It's not, not too bad. Going over here causes what, people? If he goes to T8 or T7, what happens there? If he, if he instead of advancing, he say I'm going to avoid the I'm going to avoid the residual because Stu said avoids the residual, so he avoids the residual goes to T8 T7. What's going to happen? Might get blasted. Yeah, yeah, you get blasted by the medium, and you get blasted by this guy, and this guy might have some sort of sneaky little LOS to T7. So, at that point, if you've got nowhere else to go, this is your best chance right here. And what else could happen here? to reduce the efficacy of that residual firepower. Look what we have here. What could we do to reduce the efficacy of that firepower, of the residual firepower? Let's say, we, let's say we're moving through there. I don't care. Boom, we have to go through that residual. What do we want to do at that point? Because we have two other squads here. We have two squads in there. Let's say he gets pinned. Can this stack move through that hex? Drop smoke in it. In Drop heck. smoke in it. Absolutely. We've got the extra unit. He can go one, two, three, four, or it could be this guy. One, two, three, four. Drop a smoke. We don't get it. We'll have an unlucky day for smoke. But the guy behind him could do the same thing because he's got a leader. And heck, he could CX even if he, because this guy seems to be wanting to go somewhere pretty fast. So we could still drop CX there, because, or we can move over to V7. You know, we've got a hindrance here. You know, but if you just wanted to go here to advance here, that's fine. Always drop smoke on the residual, and you'll get that smoke modifier when the other guys move through it. I think I was trying to drop smoke up there, and I got a... Oh, no, sorry. Never mind. That's all right. That's all right. But but, but that's the concept. If you have to go... Yeah, you dropped it up here, which is a good spot, because you probably would... I think you'd end up moving guys over here. So you, you, you're taking the shot here because the smoke here is important for your guys to do. So, which is good. I have no problem with that. One guy happened to, one guy, one squad went up there, probably was going to try, try to drop it on the smoke, maybe. He happened to break, don't have a problem with that. And we've got a good shot there. And then the, it uh, looks like Eric, final protective fires right here, and he, and he just blasts those guys. He rolls a three, we lose a squad, the leader breaks. It's just unfortunate. You know, three's a three. I'm not, I'm, you know, it's just a three. I mean, you can't, you can't complain about a three. It's going to happen. And then uh, we're out back over there. Yep, fine, because that's all covered. And these guys route away. Good deal. Americans route up. So we've got the Americans flanking up. The Germans and then moving across the street. 
And this, 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 do you guys see what the Germans are doing right now? They're all shifting to the right. And this is why this is a nice little flank. A, to stop to uh, for route pass. And B, let's say because the scenario special rules, or not the special rules, the setup says you can enter on or after turn one. Let's say we entered, I think we had, how many, that's, I think, seven, seven American squads. Let's say we entered five American squads over here. We kept a leader and two squads off on turn one, right? Let's say that the, the, those guys are off on turn one. This is German turn one. Americans come up here. Uh, or now, now it's ally turn two. So the, our guys are still off the board. Two squads and one leader. We've got five squads. The three three sevens kind of make it his way. The nine minus two spin it around. He happens to get broken, unfortunately. Jeez, nine morale. And the CX unit. Oh wow, he looks like he a uh, coward. Look at that CX unit. This is turn two. Turn two Americans are at the top of the board. That's pretty sick. Now we're hoping to get our units in here. We have three squads, very powerful base right there, and a leader down the bottom. Solid fire base down here. We can handle these guys. You know, we lost our big boy here in the middle. Not a problem. We've got him up top. We've got some action up top. And let's say, let's see where the Germans are at the beginning of American turn three. Axes are moving. Those guys are DM'd. Get CX. This is uh, beginning of ally turn three. <clears throat> so, we're still centralized here. Now the Germans, look how the Germans are situating themselves. They have to cover pretty much the cover, well, they are covering every avenue of approach. You know, they've kept the guy here. He's centralized, central leader. Uh, I think the other leader's right here. You know, he's got to try and thwart these guys here. I'm not sure if he can do it or not. That's a giant stack. He doesn't really want to face him. Unit here to unit here to stop this guy from getting free buildings. So they are really spread out. Whereas it looked like they were going to concentrate really hard on this side. But the Americans are coming from every single edge. And even if we kept those two squads and a leader off, we'd have to be entering somewhere. At that point, we could enter the middle or just put, put more pressure over here. But uh, we'll just continue with what we got here. But uh, but again, that, that's that where, where we see a giant shift from here because the Americans all came on the right-hand side. The Germans were shifting really hard and that's where you see, that's when you have to read the map, that if the Amer if the Germans if know you are keeping units off the board, very similar to um, S6, released from the east, right? If you keep units off the board, they don't know what direction you're coming from. Most likely, they're going to be coming to that free building. But in this one here, they can come down the middle, come the right-hand side, or come the left-hand side hard. So in that case, the Germans have to keep units at bay. If this squad were not there, if this unit were not there, this half squad, where would these guys be? They'd probably be in the center here or across the street. They could very well be across the street, covering this road here and covering this road here. And so therefore, it's like a frontal attack, sort of like that other scenario that we just saw, where the Americans were here and they fired forward, they routed back, rallied, came up, fired, rallied, rallied back, came forward, fired. Same thing here, or just a different angle. You'd fire, you'd route across the street, rally, come back. So that's where I think this sort of maneuver might prove to be very fortuitous. And we've got, looks like we lost a unit over here, but we've got some, we've got a two on one there, not bad. First fired here, breaks. He takes advantage of that and he runs across the street because he cannot fire at a target that is further away. That's a free move. Unfortunately, he got broken, but we have a squad over here. And nine minus two looks like he's gonna beat the living daylights out of this guy over here. Could move straight down. This accomplishes two things. It gets him closer to the victory condition, plus it eliminates that unit. Good use of moving units, mobility, using your leader, even though it's a nine minus two, Right, this guy, this guy's already got a leader. We don't need another leader over there per se, but a nine minus two can eliminate this unit. And knowing that the seven four seven is probably going to jump him anyway, and we could possibly get the medium for po possibly future use at the end. I'm not sure what turn it is. Looks like Ally turned three, but it eliminates a German unit. 
<clears throat> and we're attacking pretty much from all sides. And the Germans are hanging on by a thread, and the Americans kind of the same way too. But the Americans, again, the Americans have the advantage because of the firepower. If they get in close combat, they do have a slight advantage in that sort of instance. I don't, I'm not sure if you rallied or not. So, advanced fire. Oh, these are the advanced fire phase. So we just simply route back up top. We jump into close combat. He's going to be vaporized. We close combat here. We're using our advantages that our OB provides us. We are Americans. We are 747s. We don't care what the enemy is. If we jump into close combat, they will probably die. Because we have 7 morale instead of 8 morale, like a 548, you know, a 548 doesn't really have a huge advantage engaging close combat because his morale factor goes out the door. And you're only a 1 to 1, he's a 1 to 2, a 5 versus a 4, eh, it's not that great. But the American firepower, even the full squads, the 666 squads, three to two versus one to two that's a two pip disparity one to two is a four for casual reduction a three to two is a six so the americans have better close combat abilities plus your morale factor is negligible when you're in close combat so at that point if if these are all six 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 squads right what should this 8 minus 1 do if this becomes a melee across the street? What should this stack of units do, this 8 firepower, do? Uh, fire at them? Yeah, you would fire, pro fire at them would be his best bet because the Americans have 12 firepower with a minus 1 leader against 4. So that's 3 to 1 minus 1. This guy is up against a wall. If we get lucky and he rolls like a nine or something like that, whatever the case may be, a nine will casually reduce him. Holy smokes, it sure would. Let's see, he rolled nine, nine, 10, 11, 12, and he casually reduces him. If we can fire in there, if he's got six morale, even if he's got seven morale, I still may consider firing in there. Simply because he has to roll more dice than we do. We only have to pass one morale check. He has to pass three. And if his leader breaks, what happens if his leader breaks? Well, I, in close combat, you don't have to take fantastic checks. But... It can pin or break these units, giving him an opportunity to kill them in close combat. So don't be afraid to fire into melee, especially if your guy's going to die anyway. Because guess what? If you break, you know, so what? It's a minus, another minus two. He needs a nine to kill you anyway. So, I mean, if he can't roll a nine, then that's, that's the way it is. But if you break him, then this guy has a huge advantage because these guys aren't going anywhere. And then it's a one to two or one to four, depending on what's left of your squad. And then you essentially just, either, well, at this point, you would just be tying up these units. You know, you're going to have a one to two minus two versus a squad. You still need to roll six for CR. You'll eventually kill these guys, but primarily broken units in this giant stack here will tie them all up for the rest of the game. And guess what? Who controls that building? Well, the German right now. Right. So if you tie them up the rest of the game by breaking these guys, and let's say you stay alive for, you know, luckily, then you just tied up two guys. Essentially, you eliminate two squads. This guy's over here, slightly off, but he's got he's got that there. So sometimes you might want to blast your own guy, especially if, if these guys are outnumbered. And they have equal or worse morale. If they have better morale, eh, uh, you might pick a different target. You might want to shoot over here or something like that. Get actually something done. Because if he breaks, these guys can move to a, get rid of that guy. Because this guy's broken too. So uh, just look for advantages and opportunities that you have to close the deal. You know, you may not like it. Uh, but that's a, that, uh, what I like to do is I don't like to fire into melee. All I want to do if I fire into my melee is make sure my attack yields about a normal morale check with a six or seven i don't want a two morale check because i suck with rolling dice i just want a normal morale check because i figured i could at least roll a seven and pin because i ain't killing a four seven four seven anyway i just want my opponent to roll shitty dice right i don't want a two or three level morale check that doesn't really do me any good because then everybody's broken i want to barely be scratched and therefore Hopefully he'll make a bad dice roll, his leader breaks or something like that. 
and then I could possibly take advantage of that situation. Sometimes it doesn't work out. Sometimes it does, you know. But just as long as you have, as long as you are, are know that that's one of the tools that you have, one of the tricks that you have in your pocket that you can fire into this melee. You don't care because you have much more to gain than the Americans in this instance. Even if everybody breaks, if everybody breaks, that's fine. You have a you have a lot more to gain there. But again. You have to read the map, and the Germans the Germans have lots of things going on. A lot, Germans got to think of a lot of things. Not an easy decision. I mean, this 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 guy's got a ton of things he could do. This guy's got a ton of things he could do. You know, this guy's in close combat. He's probably going to die. Do we want to move over here to keep these guys out of the battle? Do we want to go up here to pressure this guy? Do we want to backdoor this guy? Don't know. You have a lot. This guy and this guy and even this guy have about five to six different decisions on what you want to try and do. And however you want to attack the Americans or just or just skulk doesn't really matter. Just know that the more tools that you have in your in your kit of making good decisions instead of just, you know, prep fire across the street, prep fire across the street, you know, do we want to prep fire or do we want to move? I don't know. You know, if we, if we bait the shot here, but I don't, I don't know if we want to bait shots of the Germans. But uh, but that's kind of what you what we can think about. Remember, the Germans have a smoke exponent of what for the four six sevens in this scenario? Three. Three. So what could the, what could this German unit do? Potentially. Yeah, I think we sort of forgot that rule. That's okay. It's easier again. It's easier to forget because the, the, the four six sevens are. But technically, he can go two four. He's probably going to get blasted. No big deal. But two four smoke could be an option again that's a, another scenario special rule gives you more tools that you can work with and be able to handle certain situations how do we approach this stack here he's going to blast us with 20 maybe go two and drop smoke here for four and then this guy could go across the street or this guy could assault move here right he still could assault move there that way this guy only gets a, a shot defensive fire phase and then we can fire them on later. So again, the options are varied. And as long as you know your options, it doesn't really matter which option you take. Because if you've got five, five choices, if you're if the, the choices that you take can take, tactical choices you could take on your menu are if you have 10 things you know you can do, then you have to evaluate those and apply them to your game plan as well as you seem fit, right? But if you only think you have three items on your menu, if you're at in and out and you're only getting a burger or a burger with cheese, I mean, that's only two options you have. Then your then your choices are limited. But if you know that you keep expanding your repertoire of things that you can do to really change things up, you know, assault moves, smoke in, fr smoke in front of advancing units, things like that, then you can really give yourself a lot more options to do. It makes you think a lot harder guaranteed but i like that right now the germans are thinking really hard here as well as the americans you know broken units close combat you know the americans look like they're in pretty good shape right here you know the germans are thinking okay i need to attack some direction which way am i going to go and i don't know if if craig had that, those thoughts in his head or not but that's what i would be thinking it's like shit do i commit here do i commit here you know do i do i fall back blow this guy away because this guy's behind me these, these are all critical decisions that you have. This guy smack dab in the middle. You know, are you worried about breaking or you want to go on the offensive? So so my only plan as the Americans here was to surround him and see what happened. That's okay. all, that, that was my plan at the start, and that's all I really tried to do. That's okay. That's good, right? Because, because if you surround him, again, just by my description here for 10 minutes, you're making him make hard choices, right? But, yeah, Eric makes good choices. Yeah. But you're but you're making him pull all of the tricks out of his pockets to be able to d decide on what path he wants to take because one one minor step and it's all gone, it's all gone. I mean nine minus two over here with the squad he's he's coming back and he's probably be picking up a medium on the way. I'd be picking up the medium. We get six movement factors, one two three four five advance or four five six. You could probably move there. I mean, but again. Uh, just when you see situations like that, just say, 
Oh my gosh, I'm dead. I'm I'm just gonna give up. You know, I'm, you know that, that's I'm I'm done. Same thing with snake eyes, right? He rolled, your opponent rolls the snake eyes when you're moving the open. What do I always say? You guys think about if he rolls the snake eyes. It's uh, it's final fire. It's final Ooh. fire. He's done. I don't care if he's got five HMGs in his possession. He's done. You just walk around him. So. Always, as long as you're always thinking and always keeping on your toes, he's gonna roll. You know, like in the, in the, in the other games, the the uh, the Americans are advancing. You know, a couple threes here and there, vaporize the stacks. I think we got a vaporization over here on three. That shit happens. But the Americans are still in pretty decent shape. He's taking a lot of casualties, but still in pretty decent shape. You know, we kill the leader over there. Uh, yeah, looks like we got a nine and a three, a casual reduction or four. Uh, probably cause reduction over there, absolutely. And we happen to select the leader in that one. Oh, well, yeah, actually, one to two against the leader. So the leader got wounded. And this is the sort of insurance that I covered two weeks ago. You got a cause reduction. This is exactly the same thing I covered last two, two weeks ago in R5. You had the 467 attack the squad and the leader, trying to kill them both. He got a cause reduction, and our leader got popped. So we didn't lose any firepower whatsoever out of that hex it's still 15 now it's 15 to 2 so this is this is the example that i was talking about last week where even you have a leader the leaders is insurance against a casual reduction that's exactly what happened in this situation the germans rolled a casual reduction against a one to two die, nice die roll dice roll four but then the german says oh your leader got wait well you didn't i didn't kill a squad Oh, so how do you think the, think the German feels? I, I'd feel shitty because like, you know, you really didn't do anything. He's still, he's a seven zero now. And again, he's not moving anywhere. What what time is it in the game? It's a turn, going to be turn American turn four. This is just a rally point for the Americans now at this point. This guy's probably not going across the street. So it's a rally point. Didn't hurt the Americans, but it's just insurance. We got a lucky shot over there on the American, huge. And the German, again, avoids this guy he sees an opportunity he pounces on it so you know a good dice roll breaks a unit that's what happens that's why we play the game and now see how the complexion of this whole changes this guy this guy gets eliminated and again not getting that kill in close combat prevents this unit getting shot at in defensive fire which allows him i think he fired on him to break that unit so Every little ripple in the pond adds up here. We still got a half squad over here. He's this. He's he's still got to stay keep keep at bay. But that one little failed close combat from the Americans prevented him from defensive firing on our German units in Q6. It's just a dice roll. That's just what we have to deal with. And uh, little things happen. And we happen to break an 04. Unfortunately, that was a great position we had there. We do, we do kill our stack here. American pounces on him. Do not hesitate. He pounces on him. Because there's no other Germans. Oh, he gets shot there, but it's okay. Don't really care about that. He does take a good shot. And that some bitch didn't rally up there either. Jeez, that's too bad. Why is he moving here? Why is this leader running this way? These guys got a route, right? Yeah. If this leader, this guy was here, he could still route back. Well... Nine minus one says, I've got nine morale. I'll make it across the street. And he was already first fired. So that's half firepower. So he makes it here. Nine morale leader in a, in stone building. I mean, come on. He's, he's practically immune to fire. So th these guys will be vaporized. And again, they'll be able to jump into close combat and kill another leader. And that's what the... Uh, uh, I'm not sure why the 8-0 was killed. But anyway... Oh, these guys are broken for some reason. Oh, they must get fired upon. Unfortunately, they broke. One guy rallies. Good, good dice roll. Good dice roll there. And so we're popping on. Americans, Germans find a little meaty machine gun in the store. Squad rallies, runs up there. He gets vaporized with the snake eyes, rolls a 12 for a morale check. And that's, again, 04 was just a bad spot for the Americans in this game. But, uh... Good, a good concept. Good, good game plan. I like the game plan. I like the three, three, seven here. What he do? He came across the street, got this position here, 
Opportunity didn't arise here. He took what opportunity was given him. He got to where he needed to go. Mission accomplished. 337, mission accomplished. These guys here came in here, got their two victory conditions. Mission accomplished. Did we want more? Yeah, probably. Sometimes it doesn't happen, but he got his part. Nine minus two and the other guys, all the other boys came over here. They took heavy casualties, got behind him. Mission accomplished, right? Nine minus one, didn't rally this little bitch right here. He couldn't come up. I mean, it's like, screw it. I can't wait for you. Nine minus one goes by himself, kills two units. Mission accomplished. We got these conditions here. We just fell short. We just fell a little short. If this guy was up here, he'd be dishing out some damage. He could smoke people, jump close, again, jump in close combat, get people worried about him. One turn earlier, if we had a successful close combat here on the first phase, that could have changed the entire game. One little phase could change the entire game. You know, even though you lost this game, it seems to me that all your units did what you wanted them to do. You got them to where they wanted to be to give you an opportunity to win the game. You just came well, up thanks. short. I, you feel better about the game than I did. So no, I mean, this is the way you got to look at it. It's like, hey, you know, I can't bring my 337 to take these for free. So you take what's given to you. That spot there. Again, success. This guy's alive. Took a victory conditions. These guys took victory conditions. Took victory conditions. You know, a couple dice rolls here, break here. Your nine minus two broke up here for some reason. Again, you know, if he didn't break, these buildings would probably be gone. You know, you're one or two dice rolls away from changing the entire complexion of this game. Even though you lost, I said, well, I didn't even get across the street. These The Germans held it so hard. Eh, one dice roll changes this entire game. You know, you've got a dice roll here. You've got a morale check here. You've got a rally here that gives you another unit over here, which... If he rallied earlier, your leader probably would have moved here. Then this, when this unit got attacked by whoever attacked him, he'd then have a minus one leader with him, with a nine morale leader, badass. I mean, this guy's badass. Nine minus one are, are I just love nine minus one leaders. They just they stay in the battle the whole damn time. So very, very, very close game. Even though you think it would, you didn't have a chance, this is a very, very close game in my perspective. You know, did you end up short? Sure. But all your guys did exactly what you wanted them to do. So your plan was a success. The dice just got in the way. And that's why we play the game, right? We're just here to play the game. The dice will either roll tens or roll snake eyes and threes. And considering the casualties you took over here and you still got to your de destinations, um, that's 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 stalwartness, you know? You know, some guys give up give up early. This one is too this, first of all, this scenario is too too short to give up on turn two. You can't give up on turn two simply because, you know, you've got lots of firepower and the Germans well, just have to sit back. Eric almost to give up on the first turn of the game today, so Yeah, I mean it's I'm just hang, I'm hanging in there. And remember remember Craig's game. Remember Craig's game? I don't know if it was against Eric or maybe against uh, uh somebody else. Uh maybe his old buddy that was trying to get back into it. Remember the Bofors, the the what was it um priority attack? Right, he hadn't hadn't played in four years. Right. Like 40 years. 40 yeah. years. Priority attack. Craig comes on and these guys get annihilated. He thinks it's over game turn one. Flips it around, comes back, and ends up winning the game. Very tight game right at the end of that one there. Very tight game. You know, uh, just continue with your plan. You know, his plan got obliterated. He probably had to change his plan up a little bit. So continue going with what you need to do. The dice are just going to get in the way and give him an opportunity to throw bad dice. You know, uh, just give him an opportunity to throw a bad dice. You crushed him in close combat, crushed him. In. You got one, two, two units and two leaders were free kills. That's pretty good. You killed them without technically shooting at them because you broke them the right route, route. You broke them during some sort of fire phase and you moved units into position to simply eliminate them. They just die for failure to route. That's what you do. That's how you succeed. You know? If we're like if it were like this and we want to fire across the street back and forth, the Germans win. Right? You tried your best to get around him and you just end up short. So, but um the one thing I wanted to notice, if you noticed in the in the particular games that I saw, uh with the with the absence of one game, is it seemed to me <coughs> that the success of the Americans 
you know, let's assume all the players at the same skill level, and I don't really, I didn't really see a lot of mistakes, uh, because it's such a tight little scenario anyway. It's like retaking Veerville. You know, um, the artillery, if it was effective, it seemed like the Americans had a walk in the park for the most part. You know, they got into the village hard and fast. I think there's one game the Americans lost, but there was a walk in the park. If the, if the artillery had no effect whatsoever, the Americans had a tough time going. And because they had a tough time going, you got you might have to take a couple extra risks, you know, drop a smoke and jump across the road, do stuff like that instead of firing. You know, you'd, at that point, you have to move. Because what happened in those games where the Germans were obliterated by the artillery, the Americans just moved straight up. They didn't stop and fire on guys. They just moved straight up. They fired on one guy, a couple guys broke, and the rest of the Americans ran past him. There was a German unit in this building the other game. The Americans just ran past him. I ain't got time to screw with you. You're, you're dead already. You know, you just don't know it. And the Americans uh, claim the positions they need to claim. And at that point, the Americans had those by like, turn three. And remember, the Germans are going to counterattack. Well, they're counterattacking into seven firepower units in stone buildings with good leadership. And that's just not going to happen unless you get super lucky in dice rolls. It's just not going to happen. So, um, unfortunately, I think that, you know, if the artillery does really well or really poorly, it can really dictate the tempo of the game. And um, and uh, but what that does do, uh, you know, I'm not saying it's a it's a terrible design, but pretty much you got three dice rolls that can essentially determine the tempo of the game. And it does, you know, normally in fights, but those are kind of like okay, I, I set up and I get attacked without having having actually to be able to attack whatever's shooting at me. Seems kind of kind of meh. You know, kind of in my opinion, you know, you either get lucky or you don't. And um, a 16 firepower is pretty damn strong. 16 plus 3 is a 7 for a morale check. So theoretically, your three units are taking morale checks at the beginning of the game. And, you know, 1.3 of them or 1.4 of them are going to break anyway. You know, so and because of that and you, the, the, the lack of units you have, the Americans can come on. But the... the the thing about that is the Americans have to set up first and then the attacks come on. So at least they don't, the Americans don't have the benefit of knowing the results of the attacks to, to, to make their moves. And uh, so I guess that's where the, the balance comes in. So I was kind of a little bit of just disappointed on that. Um, or maybe, maybe I'm just looking at it the wrong way. Maybe the Germans getting, didn't get destroyed by the artillery. So they took advantage of that and had a stalwart defense and the vice versa. If the Americans had a really good result on their artillery, they took advantage of that. You know, just like any other advantage you have in a game. Uh, that's probably how I should look at it. But um, uh, because this went bounced either way, but it seemed to bounce pretty hard, uh, one way or the other. This was probably the closest fight. I gotta be honest with you in terms of execution, uh, of the five or six games. You know, um, uh, just by it seemed like you you got to where you wanted to do. And um, we just fell short. And some of the other games, they didn't quite, it did seem like they wanted to attack across the road and, <clears throat> you know, your 12 plus three or whatever didn't really work out or they rolled like a three or morale check. And so, uh, you know, those giant charts didn't really work out. It's like um, it's like the game that we were watching earlier with uh, with John, right? Uh, they're probably still playing it, right? He, I think John rolls a, a 16 or a 20 chart or something like that, 20 plus two, and he rules like a 10, you know, like a, a no effect, you know, something like that. It's like, you know, you kind of, there's like a little lackluster in some of those rolls that come out, but that's, you know, that's the chance you take when you roll the dice. But, uh, you know, that's the way I kind of I feel about this game. Uh, I don't know if you if you guys have played this one before. I really haven't seen anybody play this one. Um, I think it's from the, the expansion pack one. I'm not sure if everyone has it. Um, but um, looks like the Russian, the Russian ASL group, and uh, and Eric and, and and you, Steve, or Craig, have the have had the scenario, and so at least some guys have have, have uh, taken their turn at it. What what did you feel about the this, scenario this, overall? This, this one is in the second uh, edition of the expansion pack one. Originally, it was released in the Beyond the Beaches expansion oh. pack for SK one. Oh right. Oh, because the hedges. Yeah, because the yeah. hedges. What did you guys think about the scenario when you were playing it, Craig? Did you did well, you Well, I thought I was desperate for the first 
two turns running around, but I kept going. And then I just pushed as much as I could, and Eric stopped me. Yeah. Yeah, I think that for me, it was the setup I was most stressed about because of the limitations um, where I couldn't, uh, where I was gonna, knew I was going to get slacked with artillery right off the bat. <laughs> so, like, where I had my leaders way in the back, I would normally wouldn't have them that far from my units. I might have them in the back, but not that far. But I was just trying to keep two hexes between everybody and then hope I might be able to smoke my way to get my units back to the middle of town. So it, it was a way, it was a tough to set up to figure that out. Right. And do you see how Eric de deciphered the, the, the artillery? He set up his leaders separate from all of his other units, not just as route destinations, but just I'm not going to stack him with somebody because it's just going to be an easy target. You know, if he wants to break one of my leaders, he's got to spend the entire mission to break my one leader, and that's it. And so, um, and of course, they can move fast. But yeah, it's a. Um, I asked a question of Craig or Eric. I, I believe at the beginning, look, it, Craig, did your artillery strikes hit? It looked like you hit uh, an actual German position with every one of them. Was that just dumb, dumb well, luck? I, I think I pinned a machine gun in the middle and uh, uh, DM somebody on the right. Yeah, but what I'm saying is you p you picked those spots before he set up, correct? Right. No. That's no, no, well, after, I after. I think that was incorrect. Yeah, after. No, you get to see the setup. No, so look at it. Look at number six here on the sheet. Oh, says, prior, prior, prior to, to all setup. setup. Yeah. The American, had, and that's why I played this solo, and that's what I did. You know, I, oh, obviously yeah. I knew what stuff was, but... The American has to pick his three spots, and I think the other a couple of the other log files did the same thing. Yeah, I think you're right. I absolutely yeah, think you're right, Neville. I think I cheated um, there. Because when I played it, I actually got lucky. I mean, I, again, I was playing both sides, so luck really isn't part of it. But <laughs> essentially, all my artillery spots split the Germans, but it, I did hit everything. It's just I, I only pinned stuff, so it end, ended up being useless. But that's key in this one. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, you're right. <laughs> That's huge. That might make so, it a little more 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 balanced. Like you say, it would probably eliminate those games where you have. Uh, I think there were two games where there were two or three broken German units right at the beginning of the game. Right. And uh, Is that. Yeah. And there's and still it all some depends drift on how the German sets up. If he clumps his stuff, yeah, you could. You definitely can still kill a bunch of stuff, but that's yeah. key. That would be a total difference because the Americans would put their target on, and then the Germans set up away from them. Yeah. Well, but the but the American see if it's the American has to. I mean, to, just to some extent. Is he all just rec yeah, the the American just has to record it, so the the German doesn't know. Right. The German has to set up right. after the American has recorded his artillery spots, but the American is has a secret. Okay, so, we we were doing that totally wrong, Eric. Yeah. Yeah. So that's and I think a couple of the other log files it looked like they did the same thing because the artillery strikes. I think hit directly and yeah, yeah, you know, it is what it is. But yeah, they all land around top play of the game and this is that probably makes a big this is probably an ASL game and we are playing it like SK. Yeah. Oh I see. I see. But yeah, but that that makes it that, that that scenario special rule one, the prior to all setup versus the American setup. Yeah. Right. That could that could be easily be uh uh overlooked. And again, right. like 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 uh Craig was saying, you know, they didn't take into consideration the German smoke either. Right. You know, maybe that wasn't part of the German plan. Maybe, maybe you remember, maybe, maybe not. But, but it's easy to forget. And like again, from the from the last session, weird scenario special rules like that, which because you're playing four six sevens for years and years and years and years, right? I mean, if you've been playing SK since it came out, you've been playing fourteen years with four six sevens. Never have they had a smoke exponent of three. They just don't. And so it's such a such an oddball scenario special rule that you just need to be reminded. And sometimes, like especially for Valzel, writing a note on the map or something like that just to remind us uh, can make a big difference in the game because stuff like that's so easy to forget because you're just not used to it. You just... You're right, Stu. Writing a note and putting it on the top of the board is an excellent idea. I thanks. Yeah, uh, and um, you know, hey I guys, figured... it, it, it's it's about ready to get a little bit weirder. Uh -oh. Because uh, I've uh, taken a look at the new scenario card for uh, S41 in the second edition expansion pack. Huh. And that 
SSR that uh, Patrick Ireland put in there about uh, prior to all setups, you know, the that that's not in there. It's not in there. Oh my gosh. Yeah, so we, were, what, we were playing the modern version. But I, yeah. I think with Daz, it, it, you roll the dot, if I remember right, after the setup and after the artillery spots are picked, you, there's a roll, and it, it, the dice roll yeah. determines where the, the artillery right. stays. Absolutely, right. yes. That, that is correct. Do they have these scenarios? So they took that, so they took that out. Huh. That's interesting. Yeah, does, does anyone have the, the original one? Or is, is it free to download from MMP? Yeah, because it's not. It's, it's not. It's it is not. I had a yeah. I had a copy of it that I downloaded from somewhere. Hang on for probably. a second. I I think I might be able to come up with it illegally, uh, but it 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 definitely was in there when I played it solo. I I remember I read oh, okay. through it about three times to make sure I knew what I was doing. Wow. Okay. So that has been updated yeah, and changed. And what which, kind of, which brings a great point but, of 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 um of scenario cards, right? I mean, even not only. Did the scenario card change from uh, version one to version two? Because we have people that have played it, you know, one way, and we have people that have played it the second way. But also, uh, again, gentlemen, just to reiterate for these scenario setups, they are a labor of love of someone, and uh, they took a, a shitload of time doing these. And obviously, this one was from the older version, and it just goes to reiterate that make sure you read the scenario card and understand the card first these are just helpful notes and some of them are very helpful at all times but um and double check your ob double check the scenario special rules all that stuff again those are all the responsibility of the players involved in the fight and if they both forget it they both forget it so what you're playing a game anyway you're having fun you know that's all that matters but um things like that can make a difference i saw i've seen that in tournament play with experienced tournament players where they were kind of go along, kind of going along and they didn't take into sort of, sort of like the victory hexes here, right? Well, this tournament player, for instance, sent units to go capture N3 and O4, thinking that those were part of the victory conditions. Well, they never were. And so he ended up losing the game because he didn't capture one of these buildings he instead captured this one. It's like, oh shit, I wasted two turns capturing this building where I didn't even need to, you know. So it's you know, little things like that can make can make it. And and then and then you, and then you just got egg on your face, right? I mean, it's just, I, mean, it's I like, got to tell a story. I, I played Craig in a game, and this it wasn't in that game, but I told him the story before we started that I was playing a solo game, and I was really proud of myself because I it was like the first successful demolition charge placement I ever had. But when I got it in there, I looked at the firepower and something wasn't right. And it turned out that I had successfully placed a flamethrower. <laughs> oh, well, so I was like, oops. I guess that would work. Give it to him and then shoot at him. I, I, I basically, I go back, you know, I go back back to my leader and say, hey, I oh. put it in there. What? You gave the enemy a flamethrower? <laughs> oh, that's cool. I've never heard that one before. <laughs> it's just stupid, you know. It, what is this? Uh, a cheap minor ally, but, but you know, flamethrower or cheap minor ally demo? <laughs> yeah. John says there's a difference between the first and second edition. Yeah. So, which is huge. Well, again, um, I love these setups. I've got, I've got them both up right here. Let me read you the. Here's the first edition. Okay. Uh, sentence number one Prior to setup, the American player secretly records three hexes which are targets for an artillery strike. And then it goes on during the turn one prep fire phase, an American player calls in each artillery strike, yada, yada. Now, second edition, special rules number one. As his first action in his turn one prep fire phase, the American player calls in three artillery strikes. So that means the counters are already on the board, you know where the enemy units are, and you're bringing down fire from above. Interesting. Interesting. Yeah, the scatter, again, the scatter that... process is about the same for uh, both scenarios. Yeah. Yeah. Just a slight variation in the in, in the scenarios between the two editions. And uh, uh, when was the other one released? Like eight or nine years ago? Uh, 
Something like that. 2010, 2010 sticks in my mind for some reason. Okay, yeah, 11 years ago. It's not too bad. 11, 12 years ago. Um, so it's not too bad. Just to go to show you that you know, things can change, and uh, it just reinforces the fact, um, even with redone scenarios, because they're, 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 they're redoing scenarios and putting them in different packs as, as they reprint stuff, even like the old Beyond Valor and a bunch of ASL stuff. I'm sure things have changed in those, and they're just kind of like, you know, they they're not really told what has changed. You just kind of go, just go by the scenario card. And uh, unfortunately, if you have the older version, um, like Nutball had, you know, he says, "I remember playing this one. This is the way you do it." And he probably doesn't even have to look at the scenario card because he remembers how it plays. Like you know, guards counterattack. I remember what units set up and what buildings, you know, based upon the old squad leader version. You know, whereas you know the newer version might have something completely different. You know, they put a commissar in that one building. You know, if I played it from the old squad leader memory, there's no commissars. So um, things change a little bit. So uh, just another lesson of make sure you read the, read the scenario card, read it well, and uh, uh, understand what's going on. So, and, uh, and uh, you know, it doesn't hurt. Again, victory conditions... I screw up victory conditions all the time. One of my uh, one of my first videos of SK, I got one of the victory locations incorrect on the retaking Veerville. You know, I thought it was some other one because I assumed it was going this way. But, uh, you know, it didn't make a difference in the sort of example that I was doing, but it could make a difference if I'm actually playing the game. Because if you're thinking that one thing is occurring in the game, but it doesn't occur in the rules or the scenario special rules or the setup, then, um, then your partner may call you on because you... Your opponent thinks that you're playing by the rules anyway. I mean, I don't, I don't know any squad leader player, any ASL player uh, that doesn't think that the opponent's just not playing fairly. I just it, the, the cheating just doesn't really. A, I've never come across it that much at all, at all, in ASL uh, because it's just there's just you just kind of don't. I mean, I guess there could be cheating, but the time investment for both players is such that. You know, cheating. I mean, the dice roll. We we all know the dice are coming anyway, so there's no real point to cheat. So, uh, so, yeah. so that snake guys is gonna re retaliate on <laughs> if you move that one in. Too many hexes. The less yeah. we know the rules, the more we cheat by mistake. Yeah, exactly, <laughs> exactly. That's just ignorance. That's just yeah, ignorance of the rule, which is which is ignorance fine. Ignorance is bliss. Yeah, and just learn a little bit more. Learn a little bit more, and that's that's all we can hope for. Is uh mistake we've got but that's a, that's a uh, crazy example that's kind of it's kind of funny but uh it happens so. yeah 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 that, that's, that's kind of interesting um no i'm just saying like for, for those for the for the person who read off the first edition sinks encouragement rule ssr1 where, um does the top of the card say this uh, underneath the title say this scenario has been updated from its original version no so that's interesting. So there may in fact be how many American squads did and your on your card do the, do you get? How many oh, American right. sevens do you get? Six. Right. The updated version gives you seven. Oh. Wow. Yep. The updated version. Yeah. The one that was released in um in the in the expansion pack second edition, um which incorporated basically beyond the beaches and and yes, the original yes, one. Yeah. Um, give you seven. Well, it looks like I had six. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The update gives you seven. Plus, it gives you the ability to place your artillery where yeah. you want it. The artillery wherever you want. But the weird thing is, is that I've got a Beyond the Beaches um, where Sink's Encouragement, and it's uh, maybe I got like a second edition of, of it because, it's, because it looks like they updated even Beyond the Beaches. So there may have even been two editions of that because the card that I have oh. says scenario has been updated from its original version, and mm. and 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 is an is an is a is splits the difference. You get six squads like you do in the original edition, but now you don't have to um, pre pre register your um, your artillery strikes. So it's weird. It's actually gone through three changes. Wow. There's a, the second well, edition. There, there, there's one that we need to address as well because uh, on the in the second edition expansion pack version, in addition to the seven full 747 squads, there's a 337 half squad, and one of the 81 leaders has been upgraded to a 9 1. Wow. 
So you have uh, you still have three leaders on the American side, but they're a nine two, a nine one, and an eight one. Yeah, that's the one that yeah my my card my 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 beyond the beaches one has that has the has six squads, but a nine minus two, nine minus one, and eight minus one. Yeah, the one I'm looking at right here, which I downloaded again from somewhere, has six full squads, a nine one leader, and two eight one leaders. Wow. So, oh, yeah, pretty, pretty that's, that's, that's your original yeah. Beyond the Beaches because I, I bought that some years ago when I first started yeah. off. That's, that's amazing. Process. So, so they've yeah. tried to they tried to rebalance it. I'm looking at the raw record right now, and it has 26 German victories and seven American victories. Hmm. That's so. why. That's probably why. That's probably why they upped the number of uh, quads from six to seven. With no. yeah, yeah. Plus, plus again, I always, I always fall back. Plus, the advent of Americans not using smoke properly, that has a lot to do. That probably has a lot to do with about probably half the German victories. So it's still thirteen to seven variation, but not using smoke will cause you to lose this game. And um, you know, you just gotta, you guys gotta get it from either side. In this case, you gotta get it across the road. You gotta get across two roads, and uh, that's about the only because you don't have any squads, right? You've got six squads in the other versions, and you have seven and a half in this version, and you still can't, you know, work effectively. So, it's interesting that they've seen the they've they've changed the differences there. Um, so, but uh, on Roar, we don't know. You know, three or four of these rec recordings could have been the you know, the new updated one, or ninety percent of could have been the updated. I have no clue, but um, because there's no ver version variation based upon the release. But um, and again, that's that's another thing about Roar is you may see this dog at twenty six to seven, and um, I think in the four or five games that we saw here, I think the Americans won two and lost three. I think the Americans won two and lost three, and this one was pretty close. So, say two, two, and practically uh, you know, almost a tie. So, it, it might they might have gotten it close to where in our small example, small sample size, where at least it wasn't a blowout on either side. And maybe they do need those broken German units right at the beginning to to get those guys across to make it less dicey instead of subtracting, you know, German units from the board and just you're just hoping they don't break from American firepower. So, interesting, interesting development there. That's a good discussion, just based on how scenario changes over time, um, based upon you know people's playings of it. I I never would have thought that it would occur change twice. That's yeah. amazing. That's amazing. Yeah, 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 I wouldn't. Yeah, I would have thought it was just one once or once, but no, it's it's been it's yeah. There's been three editions of this of this scenario. God, that's crazy. That is crazy. That's uh, again learn something new every single day. I'm just just something great, and, and maybe maybe that's I don't know. I just I just felt that the o OBA seemed to be a little overpowering in there when when in fact originally it never was, you know. And so that's just a perception from my from my example. Oh, yeah, yeah. In the original edition, yeah, the American the American just has to guess where the German might be. Yeah. So the American artillery could just land in places where they're not, and that's yeah. it. Mm -hmm. you know? yeah. uh, just nothing. So it's just that's a uh, it's, it's that's pretty interesting that I that I focused on the artillery as a key component of the scenario, and uh, even with the control of this of the artillery, you know, sometimes it was no effect, sometimes it was disastrous. So it's you know. You know, a little bit of some, a little bit of, you know, you're really going to blow the shit out of them or break one guy or have no effect. And, uh, mm -hmm. you know, at that point, you just still got to, you got to fight the battle. And maybe that's why they added the extra guy. And just in case they all failed, even though you could place them or even though they randomly didn't go anywhere, maybe one more squad makes the difference. And again, one more squad does what, gentlemen? If you have one more squad available, what can he do? Generate more smoke. <laughs> Generate more smoke. That one more smoke attempt across the road. Now you have two guys rolling die, and the second guy gets it. All right, gentlemen, thank you so much for joining us for another session of Tactical Tuesday. And again, we thank the Russian ASL contingent to provide those log files with us, as well as our local uh, players here. So uh, it was hinted. I think the question came in at the end. Maybe I edited it out. I'm not sure. But... I'm trying to develop an ASL or an AS, ASL SK to an ASL transition video. So you'll see one of those come out within a week or two. And um, it's going to be programmed instruction or whatever you want to say. 
I am not going to be teaching the rules per se, but what I will be doing is highlighting some rules that will be of value and things that you will need to know in that particular scenario. We're gonna start off small with Gavin Take. That's why it's on Game of the Month on Scenario Archive. Go play, go log some games of Gavin Take in there, log them on Scenario Archive and uh, start populating those files for with SK Play. So SK players playing scenario, uh, Gavin Take with some of the suggestions that I'll provide. You don't have to go abide by my suggestions. I'm just some loser on this planet, but they can help you in transitioning to ASL. When I first looked at it, it's like, oh, you only need to know a couple rules. And then you crack it open and use other resources other people have developed. It's like, um, yeah, you pretty much have to read the whole damn rule book. It's like, that's the purpose of what I'm doing. I'm going to leave rule sections out and tell you to play a certain way. Play through the scenario, short scenario. You want to add some more rules in? Go back in there, read some more rules in your ASL rule book and put them in the same game and play it again. It's quick game, it's down and dirty, nothing super special, but you can incorporate those things into the game. Sort of like retaking Veerville. You can play it with different strategies all the time. The same idea, add a different rule set in there, extrapolate upon the rule set. And I'll go into that later. Anyway, hope you enjoy that. Uh, that will be coming out soon. And thank you for the guys that joined us for Tactical Tuesday. It was really busy. We had about 15 guys in there. That was really exciting. And um, it's always great to have a bunch of guys. And we had a really good discussion. Everyone was jumping on in this one. So it was a really good discussion. And we'll see you guys next time on Tactical Tuesday.